Hey everyone, a few days ago I made a video called Elk and Docker Compose Part 1 and we used Docker Compose to quickly set up Elastic, Kibana, MetricBeat, FileBeat, and Logstash. I said in that video that I would do a follow-up video where I do a deep dive and explain line by line what I did in Part 1. However, I have a small change of plans. I want to delay the deep dive video because I learned that it is pretty easy to use Docker Compose to also set up an Elastic Agent, Fleet Server, and APM. So I want to do a quick demonstration of that first and then do a deep dive video that goes from beginning to end that covers everything that we've discussed. The Elastic team already created documentation on how to use Docker Compose to set up an Elastic Agent, Fleet Server, and APM. In fact, it builds on the code we already set up in our last video which is why I want to make this video right away. This documentation assumes you have some working knowledge of Elastic Agents, Fleet Server, and APM. If you don't know how these things work yet or the theory behind them, you can watch my earlier videos because it explains these things in much more detail. You can find links to those older videos in the description of this video. Once you understand the theory or how Elastic Agents work and how Fleet Servers work and how APM works, then you can use Docker Compose to automate and expedite setting everything up. So with all that said, let's try to use Docker Compose to quickly set everything up. The Elastic team already has a Git repository of all the code we need, and you can see it right here. Now, I won't go into detail of explaining how all this code works. Uh, I'm going to reserve that for another video. I'm going to run this code off of the machine from the last video using Red Hat Enterprise 9.2. And in terms of the IP address, it's the same as before, which is the 192.168.0.22. The reason there's all these other IP addresses is because the Elk stack from my last video is still up and running. And we should probably just shut all this stuff down. So I'm going to clear the screen and type docker compose down remove orphans to get rid of all the containers and hyphen hyphen volumes to make sure all the data from the last project is erased so that we can start fresh. Okay, so let's make a new directory for this part two. So I'll just make it as a sibling directory to our last project. And let's actually go and grab the repository. So that's the link, git init, and then git remote add origin, and then the URL to the repo. And let's just get all the branches. Looks like there's just the main branch, so we'll check out the main branch. Now let's take a look at all the files we have here. You'll notice that this project is built off of the last project. We still have all the configuration files from the last video. The main difference in this project is that we have the introduction of a new kibana.yaml file. And we also have this app directory, which is a website made with Python. You will see later that this Python code has already been instrumented for application performance monitoring. I can also quickly show what is the difference between our newest Docker Compose YAML file and the Docker Compose YAML file from the last video. I can do this by copying over the previous Docker Compose file into this one that we currently have. Then I'll just run the git diff command to see the differences. So the red lines you're seeing reflect the new lines that have been added to our latest Docker Compose file. You can see a couple of new lines here for a new volume for fleet server data. New lines here for SSL certificates for the fleet server. There's actually a Kibana YAML file now. And that's because with the Kibana YAML file, we're actually gonna specify some certificates for it. And down here, we just have more information about configuring SSL certificates. And finally, down here, we see two containers, a container for the fleet server, along with all the configuration, and a container for the Python app. Next time in the deep dive video, I will explain line by line what's going on. But for now, I will just say that the only additions to this Docker Compose file were merely 
SSL upgrades, a fleet server container, and a Python web app container. So let's exit this file and take a quick peek at the Python web app code. Okay, so you can see here right at the top, we're gonna connect to the APM server with this service name. Uh, we're gonna have a token for it or password. Here's the connection string to the fleet server. And the rest of this is just Python code to set up a web app. It's got methods in place to send more information to the APM. I'll explain more of this in a deep dive video, but for now, let's just uh, actually get the whole platform up and running. I'm just gonna reset the Docker compose file and we'll do docker compose up build hyphen d and I'll pause until this is all up and running. All right, looks like everything is up and running now. Let's look at the containers. Okay, my monitor is too small, so let me get that other command that shows fewer columns. Okay, this looks better. So it looks like everything is up and we might as well go to our browser and open up Kibana. So I'm going to put in the IP address of my machine and we're using self-signed certificates. So I'll have to accept the risk and continue. Now I'll type in my username password. What was the password again? It's change me. Okay. So elastic change me. And once we get in, I'm going to skip over anything related to beats or log stash because those will continue to work just like they did from the last video. Instead, I want to go straight to the fleet server tab and go to the fleet server settings. If you've seen my earlier videos, you will know that to get the elastic agent fleet server and APM working, we need to configure the fleet server output, which means we need to properly set the fields in this right hand panel over here. Specifically, we need to focus on the host, the fingerprint for the certificate authority and the actual certificate authority. So let's do what we have done in previous videos, which is to grab the certificate authority file from the Elasticsearch environment. In this case, the CA file is found in the Elasticsearch Docker container. I just need to find the exact container directory, which will be mentioned somewhere here in this guide. So let me just scroll through and try to find it. All right, here it is. So I'm going to take the CA file from this Docker container and put it on my host machine so that I can work with it. So Docker CP, the Elasticsearch container, the path and into our TMP directory. And now let's generate the CA's fingerprint with this command here. Uh, and as mentioned, the CA files in our TMP directory here. So let's generate that C fingerprint right now because it's one of the fields needed to configure our fleet server output. All right, now that we have the fingerprint, there's only one thing left that we need. We need to get the contents of the certificate authority and put it into a YAML object. So let's grab the ca.cert file with cat tmp ca.cert. All right, here's the content of the CA file. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into my notepad, which is actually on another screen. So let me just drag it over here and then I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So now I'm going to need to format this CA file uh, with a proper YAML configuration notation that the fleet server output can understand which is this SSL certificate authorities and then hyphen pipe. Now the spaces matter a lot and it has to be exactly four spaces here. So I'm going to take this four space, paste it here, paste it here and just paste it everywhere. Things will break if you don't have the correct four spaces here. All right. And let's see. Oh, got to delete this first line. All right. So now we can come back to our fleet server. And let's update these fields. The host is the HTTPS ES01, the Docker container for the Elasticsearch. Let's paste in our fingerprint over here. And now let's paste in our CA file over here. 
and it'll just save and deploy. So in a moment, uh, we should click to our Agents tab. And if I hit Refresh here, it should recognize that um, an agent is uh, being set up and it's gonna have the fleet server policy. And I'm just waiting for the CPU and memory to show up here. Uh, oh, actually, there we go. So that just means that the Elastic Agent is up and running along with the fleet server and APM. So I'm gonna click to this APM tab over here. And, oh great, so my Python web app is being recognized as an APM service. Let's just take a look at the Docker logs for the Python web app to see if there's anything interesting. So Docker logs, ES cluster web app, one. Okay, uh, yeah, just ignore those fail to submit message. That was just on startup. But what I wanna grab here is this URL. Okay, so it's hosted locally on port 8000. So now I'll just go to my web browser on 192.168.0.22 on port 8000. And I should see this website that was um, made by the Python code. I will just click on some of these buttons because they will trigger some APM hooks and send information to the ELK stack. So let's take a look to see if anything's come through yet. I'll maybe click in here. Okay, I do see it, these two records here. Let me just try going back here. I'll hit refresh again. I'll hit refresh here. I was expecting a bit more information. Maybe I'll try restarting the web app container. Let's try pressing refresh this time. Oh, okay, all right. So now we're seeing some information in here. Maybe the restart helped or maybe there was just some delay. Okay, yeah, looks like things are working now. So that's basically it. That was a very quick run through of setting up Elastic Agent, Fleet Server, and APM with Docker Compose. All you need to do is Docker Compose up, grab your CA files, and configure the Fleet Server output. I will try to make the deep dive video as soon as I can, which will go through line by line everything that we discussed in this video and the last video. But before that happens, there's a possibility I need to release videos on some other technology platforms first. But um, in any case, subscribe to the channel if you wanna stay up to date on the videos as we release them. So see you in the next video.